Today we're going to be making spinach and feta phyllo pastries. I'm going to show you how to make a delicious spinach and feta mixture and how to fold it up into some beautiful little pastries. Hi, I'm Taryn. Welcome to my kitchen studio. This is where I like to have fun with food and teach others simple cooking tips and tricks. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to click that little thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel if you're into cooking tips and tricks that'll make your life easier in the kitchen and give your creations a professional finish. Today we're going to be using phyllo pastry. It's such a light, versatile pastry and it's much healthier in comparison to puff and flaky pastry. I'm going to show you a delicious spinach and feta mix, otherwise known as spanakopita. And I'm going to show you a few different ways of how to encase this mixture in phyllo pastry. A few of my favourite flavour combinations are a chicken pie filling, a goat's cheese pine nut and dried apricot filling, and even banana, caramel and chocolate is delicious. Let me know in the comments if you've used phyllo pastry before and what some of your favourite flavour combinations are. So let's get started. I'll leave the recipe in the description below. These are the ingredients we need. Some fresh spinach, a nice big bunch. It looks like a lot, but it will wilt down to being not that much at all. An onion, clove of garlic, some fresh thyme. You don't have to use thyme, you can use fresh rosemary or parsley. Then we've got our phyllo pastry and our feta. And then we've got flour, butter, an egg, milk and salt and pepper. Let's prepare the spinach. Sometimes spinach has got these real thick stems and that's not very nice to eat. So the best way to do it is just to pull on the edge here and it just pulls that whole stalky bit out. When it's young spinach, you don't have to worry, they've got soft stems. I'll throw it in a bowl and pour some boiling water over it to wilt the spinach. Now we can prepare the diced onion. I'll leave a link in the description to a video I've done on basic knife skills. This will show you how to dice an onion, crush your garlic, chop your herbs in greater detail. The last thing we need for our mix is the feta cheese. I'm just going to put a wee chunk to the side and we'll crumble it straight into the pot. The spinach is all wilted, so now we need to strain off this hot water. I then put some cold water on it to cool the mixture down enough for me to lift the spinach out and wring out all the excess moisture. Just be careful sticking your hands in, there might still be some pockets of hot water. We need to take a wee pile and squeeze as much of that water out as we can. If you leave liquid in it, it'll make the end product quite runny. Who would have thought that big pile of spinach would end up just that tiny little bundle? I'm going to give that a wee chop. We've got all our prep done, so now we're ready to start cooking. I'm going to put a splash of oil in my pot. Then we're going to sweep the onion, the garlic and the thyme. Then we'll add the butter. While it's melting, we can heat the milk. I'm just going to pop it in the microwave for a minute or so. Once the butter has melted, add the flour. We're essentially making a roux. There's your French lesson for today. The word roux means a mix of fat and flour and forms the basis of many sauces. Let it cook out a little, then slowly add the hot milk. Wait until it's all absorbed before adding another little bit of milk. Keep doing this until all the milk is in the pot. Then cook for another minute or so 
before turning off the heat. Now we need to add our egg. I'm going to crack it into the milk jug. And give it a little whisk with a fork. We need to add the egg to our mixture, but we need to be careful when adding it that it doesn't scramble because of the heat in the pot. So the best way to avoid that happening is to take a little bit of the hot mixture and put it into the egg mixture and that will temper it slightly. And then we add the whole lot back and stir it around quickly. And now we can add our spinach and feta. Just crumble the feta into the pot. And don't forget to add a good dose of salt and pepper. And then stir it all together. And there's our mixture all done. I'm just going to leave it to cool a little and then we'll put it into our phyllo pastry. Our spinach and feta mix is all cool and ready to use. So here's our phyllo pastry. Look at it, it's so thin. Because it's so thin, it does dry out quickly when it's left out. Some people will put a wet tea towel over it just to keep it damp and stop it from drying out. Or well, otherwise the best thing is just to take a little out at a time and use that first. We'll start with a little parcel shape. I'm going to make mine cocktail size, but you can make these a lot bigger. You'll need at least two layers of pastry to make it thick enough. Some people brush some melted butter over every surface, but I personally feel that that's not necessary. If you want to do something, you can give it a little squirt with some oil, or you can just brush some melted butter over the top just before you bake it, and that'll brown it up nicely. Cut the size pastry you need with scissors. I cut only a few at a time. Lie the sheet flat, with the top layer overlapping the bottom layer a little. Then pop a decent spoonful of mixture here, near the bottom. Fold the bottom up and over the mixture. Then fold over the sides. If you can keep the edges square, it will keep the parcel nice and neat. Then roll it up squeezing in the sides a little to give the parcel some height. You need to be gentle with this pastry so that it doesn't tear. I mentioned before about squeezing in the edges as you roll it up to give it some height. If you don't, you will get a much flatter looking parcel you can see the difference here. Now I'll show you some little triangles. We need a long strip for these ones. Fold it in half. Pop a little spoonful of mixture here. Don't make it too big. Fold over the corner and keep the right angle. Make sure you squeeze these corners so that the mixture doesn't ooze out in the cooking process. We've got a tray full of pastries ready. So I'm going to brush a little bit of melted butter over the top and then we'll stick on some sesame seeds and poppy seeds to garnish it. I'll put some oil on these flatter ones so that you can see the difference it makes once they're cooked. And lastly, I'll show you some little phyllo baskets. 
going to give my tray a wee squirt of oil. You'll need a squarish piece of pastry. Fold it in half to make it slightly thicker. Pop one layer over the other to make a star shape like this. Push it into the mini muffin tin, leaving alternate holes empty if possible. And spoon in some of the spinach and feta mixture. Now we're ready to bake these delicious little parcels. I'll put them into a hot oven and bake them until they're nicely browned. Look at these little beauties. I've just come out of the oven and they took about 12 minutes. Let them cool a little and then when they're cool enough to handle, they're ready to eat and enjoy. These little baskets come out really easily especially when you've left every second hole free. These are the parcels that we buttered and these are the wee parcels we oiled. So you can see the difference. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to my channel for some more delicious recipes and great tips from my kitchen to yours. Have fun!